got all the way up to 96. In this video, we're going to talk about the best bang for your buck. And that's why we're going to talk about the Stilosa, the ECP 3420, as well as the DeLonghi Dedica. Because who doesn't want the best bang for their buck? So my plan for this video was really to kind of compare these two machines with the DeLonghi Dedica because these are absolutely the best sellers on the market in the budget range or economical range of espresso. Let's see by the end of the video if we can determine a winner best bang for your buck. Let's start off by talking about the commonalities between all DeLonghi espresso machines. So to start off with, they are all 51 millimeter brew groups. That means that the port of filter is 51 millimeters. The basket inside is 51 millimeters. The tamper, 51 millimeters. Everything is 51 millimeters in regards to these machines. So keep that in mind, very important. I get that question all the time. There is a difference between the port filters in these guys and in the Dedica, and that is on these boiler machines, it's got two tabs, one, two, just like that, one, two. And on the Dedica, it's got three tabs, one, two, three. So they are not compatible. The reason that this one has got two tabs, whereas this one has three, I don't really know. What I do know is that all of DeLonghi's machines that have boilers automatically also have heated brew groups. That is the really excellent thing about these machines is that they come with the boiler mounted directly above the brew group here. So after just a short period of time, the brew group is already hot. That is the first difference to this one. This never gets hot. That is an important thing because if you got a hot brew group, that helps to keep the temperature stable. You want it completely stable throughout the whole extraction process. Let's turn these machines on. We wanted to see how fast they are to heat up. This one takes between one and one and a half minutes. Both of these do. And the Dedica needs about 30 seconds. So this is faster to heat up. And you can hear a big difference right now. The boiler is heating. That's this one and this one making all that noise. All right, so first major difference, boiler, boiler, 150 milliliters, and this has got a thermal block inside. So a thermal block is basically on-demand heating. So you just press a button and it starts pumping up the water through the thermal block and it gets heated as it's passing through that thermal block. Whereas in the boiler, you've got a big heating element that is always keeping the water at temperature based on a couple of thermostats. That's just a two point operation, by the way. Get, if the water temperature gets low enough, then it will start heating until it reaches the upper thermostat and then it stops. But again, that is a huge advantage in my opinion because here you got really nice temperature stability throughout the brew group, whereas you do not have that here. The next thing I wanna point out is that these two guys are manual machines. That means you gotta start and stop your extractions all by yourself. It will never stop on its own. This one here, on the other hand, has got volumetric dosing. So you just press a button and hold it in. And once you reach your desired weight, just let go of the button and that will be programmed for next time. So that is super nice about the Dedica. It's a more semi-automatic machine. And you got two volumes you can program. You can do here a smaller espresso. Here you can do a double espresso, for example. And then the third button is for going to steam mode. Talking about steam mode, all three of these machines need about, I would say, 10 seconds to get into steam mode. So this one may seem like it takes longer before the lights actually uh, come on, that it's up to steam temperature. But what I can tell you is that you ought to just wait 10 or 15 seconds before you start steaming. Then you got good pressure. You don't want to wait until that steam thermostat has been met because by that point, it's a bit too late. This one, the nice thing about the Dedica is that it can just keep steaming and steaming and steaming until you run out of water because it's an on-demand system. That's really cool. These guys will eventually run out of water in the boiler to turn into steam. And therefore you got to refill the boiler with water. So advantage to the Dedica for that, that is a common thing with all thermal block machines. The Dedica also offers you a reminder to descale, which is what you can see here. It's flashing orange, which tells me it's time to descale, Tom. Another interesting thing about this one is, is that it's got like safety features. 
So after you've steamed milk, it's not going to let you pull a shot again right away because the thermal block is too hot. So these buttons will flash and tell you, okay, I've got to let water here through the steam wand in order to cool down the thermal block and first then can you pull a shot again. These guys are completely manual. They'll let you pull a shot at any time. But if you pull one right after steaming milk, the boiler is going to be too hot and your shot is going to be bitter and it's going to run too fast. Another thing that the Dedica has that these two do not is a pre-infusion. So you'll see it will let some water through, pause, and then it will keep going with the extraction. That is kind of a nice thing. That does help a little bit to round out the shots, but it's not a total necessity. I don't always use it on the other machines that I have, whether I can program it or not, but these do not have pre-infusion. Just keep that in mind. Now, something else that people have brought up as a question is, what kind of pressure do these systems have? And that is, um, well, let me show you. They all have exactly the same system. They've got an Ulca pump, which is made in Italy. And it's got one of these guys right here. This is an overpressure valve. DeLonghi calls it an anti-drip or safety valve. It comes with the spring inside. And when the water pressure gets to be too much, it will go here through the end of this overpressure valve and go back into the tank. And this is supposed to keep the pressure down within the system. So if the pressure ever would get to be way too high, it's going to get diverted back into the water tank, which is a good thing. It is, however, not settable. I would not recommend taking this apart or putting different springs in there to try to reduce the pressure for two reasons. Number one, this is not really meant to be taken apart and put back together. I've tried myself. Uh, and number two, the pressure that these machines provide is fine. The maximum that you'll get, even if you use a blind filter, is about 11 or 12 bar. I've measured it. Okay, there we do get up to 12. Okay, so there we also top out at 12. And if you pack your puck properly, if you grind the right amount, so the right dose and the right fineness, you're going to still end up getting eight to nine bar. You can try it yourself. If you grind too coarse, you'll notice it comes out way too fast because you're not at a high enough pressure. But if you grind properly, the right fineness and the right amount, for these double baskets, I grind about 16 grams in there, your extraction is gonna be right around nine bar. So just because it says 15 bar on the box, don't think that these are running at 15 bar. The systems don't even get up that high. But again, pack it properly and you'll end up with nice shots. I've gotten really excellent, nice, well-rounded shots. Not bitter, not sour, just nice and chocolatey, a little on the sweet side from both of these machines. From this one too, although this does tend to be a little bit sour because it's a little lacking in temperature. So for me, I've gotten the best result from this guy, the ECP 3420. In particular, when it's been on for 20 minutes or longer, then it's really got time to be completely heated up. The porta filter's hot, the brew group is hot, therefore the basket is hot and everything is at the same temperature. Mm, making for delightful extraction. Getting value from this video? Please take a moment to like and subscribe. Something else that people have asked is, do any of these machines have a three-way solenoid valve? And no, they don't. I see that as an absolute advantage because with these not having that three-way solenoid valve to release the pressure off the puck after the extraction, the pressure stays there and it drips a little bit. And sure, that's a little bit annoying, but on the other hand, the pucks, they just plop right up. Bam, bam. Bam, every single time, perfect clean pucks. You don't have to screw around with cleaning the basket out afterwards. That's what I love about DeLonghi. And I think it's due to the fact that they omitted that three-way solenoid valve because what's happening, if you're using a machine that does have a three-way solenoid, well, after the extraction, you've got water on top of the puck and it just gets sucked up and out of there. But it really messes with the structural integrity of the puck. That's at least my opinion of what's happening. And therefore, when you go to knock it out, it's not as strong as these pucks that simply were not disturbed and were allowed to release pressure throughout the bottom of the puck through the basket so that when you knock them out, they knock out perfectly. What else do I have to say? They all do a good job at steaming. As I mentioned, this one can steam limitlessly. As long as you have water here in the tank, these you have to refill after steaming. But what's interesting is that they all just require about 10 seconds to heat up. That's very convenient. 
For household use, all these machines do a nice job at steaming, do a pretty good job at espresso, this one being the best. At, that, at this point in the video, if you're enjoying the content, if it's giving you any value, please like the video. Consider subscribing to the channel. I do appreciate it. And keep in mind, I'm going to be putting these machines in the description down below as well as the porta filters, the baskets, a tamper, so you can check these things out for yourselves. Right, I'd just like to show you the difference in the shower screens between the ECP and the Stilosa over here. So you'll notice that the ECP has got a full-size shower screen right here, and the Stilosa on the other hand is much smaller. In fact, it fits inside. So if I measure these out on the ECP, this is an aftermarket one, by the way, from IMS. It's a, a beautiful shower screen that does help for a bit better distribution, and it's a nicer quality. That's 50.7 millimeters. This is the original one here. It's currently installed in the Dedica 50.4. So these are basically the same deal, just this is a higher quality. And then we got this little one on the Stilosa that is only 42 millimeters. So I'm not sure why they chose to use this small one on the Stilosa. But that is the main reason that I prefer the ECP model over the Stilosa because you can put this nice IMS shower screen on it and you've got a larger area for the water distribution. So you can put this on the ECP, you can put it on the Dedica as well. That is the difference in the shower screens. All right, so what we wanna do now is test this three times and see what kind of temperature curves we get. 16 grams. All right, here you can see that the trials two and three are a good amount hotter than trial one for the ECP, and they all trend similarly downwards, but they have a pretty good temperature overall. All right, same spiel now here, but with the Dedica. And that's that. All right, as you can see for the Dedica, trials two and three are hotter. They all trend downwards for the pre-infusion before peaking back upwards and then trending downwards again throughout the shot and again trending upwards towards the end. And finally, here are the six curves put up against one another so that you can see the behavior between the Dedica and the ECP. I think the DeLonghi actually kind of starts and ends at a higher temperatures, whereas the ECP seems to kind of go down slowly over time. But the flavor profile of the ECP seems to work better for me. All right, so what I'd like to do now is do a workflow for each of these machines so that you can compare. Let's start with the Celosa. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and dose out 16 grams. And I always use this bottomless porta filter with the Stilosa. It works better for me. I would recommend that you guys do the same. That way you can see exactly how your extraction is. I'll try to distribute the grounds a little better here with this WDT tool. And we're gonna measure our shot too. 
The unfortunate thing about this Stilosa is it's hard with that drip tray to fit a scale in there. Is this going to work? Ah, there we go. All right, here we go. Oops. I am having issues with this Stilosa today. That's what it looks like, but Let's go ahead and put it in steam mode. And the reason I say it's not the best extraction is just because I had a leak there in the gasket. So who knows exactly what temperature that we were extracting at. There we go. Let's let a little steam out. Condensation, I should say. But you can see this has got some massive, massive steam pressure. That is nuts more than enough steam pressure to texture the milk and it's pretty fast too all right that's plenty hot that might even be a little bit too frothy you'll see i put a cable tie here on this nozzle and that's so i can use it without the panarello i'm going to transfer it to this pitcher that should help to get the the milk incorporated a little bit better Okay, so you see there, that is a nice cappuccino, at least nice looking anyway. Now I have to cool down the boiler, so I'm gonna add water and open up the valve. And how's the cappuccino? Despite the goofy extraction, pretty tasty. Yeah, it's got a nice flavor and the milk is super duper creamy. These little 150 milliliter boilers are incredible for the power that they provide, provided that you just use the nozzle instead of the panarello. Let's move on to the ECP 3420. Here we go. Looking like a nice shot. 20 grams. Looking for 32. Excellent. Going into steam mode now. I had the milk a little bit too thick that time, but there's that cappuccino. Let's cool down the boiler. All right, so this one by the ECP 3420. Mm. Ooh, that's nice. Super creamy, very rich, nice extraction on that one. The milk was a little bit thick for a nice design, but texture, perfect. All right. Here we go. Oh, let's go into steam. Already ready. The Denica, I would say, does take a bit longer. It's not quite as fast in steaming, 
but it's no slouch either. Now we're already pretty hot right now. Okay, and that's the one by the Dedica. How's this one taste? Mmm. Oh, it's also very good. Maybe not, not quite as hot as the previous two models, but also very creamy. As far as the cappuccino is concerned, extraction is good. Maybe not quite as intense as the ECP 3420, but it still does a good job for what it is. I mean, a real good job. That's why it's one of the best sellers. But yeah, that is the DeLonghi Dedica. All right, guys, so in conclusion for me, and my results in testing all three of these machines for espresso. This guy is the winner. ECP 3420 in Europe known as the ECP 35.31. Also for steam pressure and for making a nice creamy milk, ECP 3420 is the winner. As far as ergonomics go and maybe partner acceptance factor, the Dedica is the clear winner. It's also the easiest one to take on vacation with you because it's very small, but for me, if you're asking for the best bang for the buck, these, no matter on what continent you're on, are really priced extremely competitively, very economical, excellent result. And this right here is for me, the best bang for your buck. I hope you liked this video. And if so, give it a like, check out my other videos. If you like what you see, subscribe to the channel, it's totally free. Until next time, I say happy coffee drinking and happy espresso drinking. Bye now.